Hello and welcome to another video. Today I thought let's start off a small series about the Volt Maxi because with release of version 2 the whole project got some kind of traction. So I thought let's um, explain a bit more what it's doing, what it's all about, what are the moving parts in there. Because I think when you run something like that and you, or if you think about running something like that, it's really important to understand what it does, to understand the risks and the possibilities and what you need to do to make it run um, in a secure way and that you feel secure um, and safe when you run it. Um, today is not about what the code exactly does itself. Um, today I want to talk about um, the moving parts, the, the architecture, what you need to set up and how it's interacting with the different um, parts in the ecosystem. Um, so let's um, look into that. Um, when we have a bot um, or any anything in that direction, um, we want to have a function that's executing some code, and this function needs to access the default chain. Um, in the case of Volt Maxi, we need to know our address, uh, or we need to access to our address, so what um, tokens we have on that, uh, on that address, the vault and the state of the vault, and the liquidity mining position, which is basically part of the address. So how can you do that? If you want that, there are two ways. You can either have your own um, server, um, where you say you have your own server running 24-7. Um, on this server, you have your code function and you have uh, your own full node, um, which is your access to the DeFi chain, um, the, the decentralized chain itself. What's important here, you need your private key on the server because the code needs the ability to sign transactions um, so that the chain says, yes, you are allowed to change whatever, send stuff, um, deposit stuff, or whatever. Um, so you need a private key so that the code runs on your server. Um, this is basically what the, the old version, or this is the first version of Voltmaxi did. It's the Python version. It's also in a repository. You can still run that. Um, I still run that. Um, and it's um, the same functionality. So it works um, in parallel to the, to the AWS um, uh, version. But what you need to keep in mind is if you run your own server, you are responsible for that server. Um, so on the one hand, it's about security and um, that no one um, is able to hack the server or get into the server, but also um, the, the infrastructure and the maintenance. Um, you need to make sure that this server is running 24 seven, that it has internet 24 seven, that the hardware is um, fail safe or redundant and everything. Um, if there's any update or trouble with the operating system, you need to take care of that. If uh, your full node has some trouble, you need to take care of that. If there's an update of the full node, you need to do the update and manage that. So a lot of stuff where you need to take care of it. Um, and that's mainly for, for non-coders, for non-developers, a bit of a pain and uh, most of them don't like that, which is perfectly understandable. And that's why we said, okay, that's, that's nice, that functionality is there, um, but, uh, that's not what the majority of users uh, are able to use or want to use. So we thought about different ways. And first thing what you need to replace is your full node. And there we luckily have this Ocean API where we say, okay, with the Ocean API, you don't need a full node. You just call a web endpoint and they have full nodes um, behind. Um, there is a lot of nodes behind the Ocean. API, which constantly talk to the chain, and therefore they know what amount, what tokens are on that address, what's the state of that world, and so on. So you can uh, ask that. And if you want to do something, send something, you sign a transaction and send it to the Ocean API, and Ocean API forwards it to the chain. So what we now need is something where we run this function, because we don't, as I said, we don't want our own server now. Um, it's a lot of pain to maintain that. So um, we go to the cloud um, and basically every cloud provider provides these um, um, serverless functions where say you just execute code. We chose AWS um, because it's on the one hand um, used by a lot of people also in the DeFi chain community. And it's really easy. In, in our opinion, it was the easiest to set up back then um, and it just works really well. Um, so. When you want to run that, um, you need to have your own AWS account. AWS account. That's also one important thing, in my opinion. 
But if you run Volt Maxi, it's all on your account, on your stuff. It's 100% self custody. There is nothing, really nothing, that anyone from the developers or anything wants for you, does for you, or has access to. So if you have your, you have your AWS account and, and you have your parameters in there, your seed phrase in there and everything, and we don't have access. So that's, that's really important. But um, back to the topic. Um, in the AWS account, you now have this Lambda function where I say, okay, this is a serverless function. Um, it's just the code of the word maxi and it can get executed. That's something, so um, you just take care of the code. Um, the whole infrastructure, the whole um, hardware, um, operating system, internet and uh, electricity and everything is managed by AWS. So they make sure that there is some environment where your code can run um, and they make sure that this, this runs and you just provide the code. Um, now this code um, needs to be triggered. So um, AWS also provides this, um, this event bridge and this event trigger. We can say, okay, um, I have this trigger. I want this trigger to fire every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, um, this trigger on the AWS triggers the Lambda. So our code is executed every 15 minutes. Um, if it does something, um, it does something, checks the state, uh, connects with the Ocean API, checks the state of the chain, maybe executes some uh, uh, um, signs the transactions, it executes the transaction, and then it finishes and it waits until the next trigger comes along and triggers the execution. To run that, because the code is there and in the code, the code itself, the code that we wrote, um, doesn't know about your world, your address, um, or your parameters or anything, even of course, and not your seed phrase and everything. So the code itself um, doesn't know about that. So we have the parameter store in your AWS account where you provide your target range um, for the vault, um, your reinvest threshold, your address, your vault um, ID, and all that stuff. So that the Lambda function, the code can access that, reads the parameters, and works on it. Um, Mainly, it reads the parameters. There's only uh, one parameter that it also writes, and that's the state, because this function is triggered every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, it basically starts fresh from a fresh state, doesn't know that it did something before, um, theoretically, just reads the parameters, says, okay, that's my parameters, that's my address that I work on. Ocean API, give me the data from this address, checks the stuff, maybe execute something and that's it. And 15 minutes later, it does the same thing again. Fresh. And one, one of the main um, security wise things that are important um, is that you need your seed phrase in your AWS account as we had the private key on your server because the um, vote maxi code needs that seed phrase to sign a transaction so the chain knows that you and that you are allowed to use that and do that. Um, so it needs to be in there, and that's why it's so important that you guard your AWS account, that um, you have multi-factor authentication in there, that you have a secure password um, for your account, because if anybody gets access to your account, they can see your seed phrase and therefore um, uh, yeah, do whatever they want with your wallet, um, if you hold it well. So be sure if you do that, that your AWS account is safe. Um, if that's you know, within the AWS account, it's saved as a secure string. Um, so if you have um, access management, you can um, secure that even more and make sure that not only the right people can read it. Best case, in my opinion, is you don't use this AWS account for anything else. Um, no one else has access to that and you're safe. Keep in mind, your seed phrase is there, so you can be safe. Um, now, Lambda, the world marks it can execute, it has a seed phrase to, um, um, to sign the transactions, it knows all the parameters, gets access, and it now can run. Um, one important thing is, how do you set that up and how do you get this code? Um, there is a reason why those are green, um, and that's because in AWS, you have a pretty a nice way of setting things like that up. It's called a cloud formation template. And if you create something like that, you can basically 
set up your infrastructure with um, one click and a few parameters. And we created such a CloudFormation template, which um, creates the Lambda function um, with the prepackaged code from our side, creates this trigger, creates all the needed parameters and everything. And all, so all the green stuff, um, also the, the role that the Lambda function is allowed to access that and uh, on a minimum basis. Um, so we, we created this um, CloudFormation template. So for you, if you use the guide, if you use the easy setup way, um, you just execute this cloud, cloud formation template, um, run it. There you get um, in the interface of AWS, so it's a nice UI, where you have a list of parameters um, where you can set it, all of them are described. You can set, um, put in your, what's your address, what's your reinvest um, threshold, what's your target range, what's your vault ID, what uh, liquidity payer you want to use and stuff like that. And then this automatically creates all that stuff so that it's uh, running and um, you don't need to worry about any of that, how to set it up, how to connect them and everything, because that's all done for you. The only thing that you need to do additionally to the cloud formation is to set up your seed phrase because a secure, on the one hand, the secure string parameter is not good to um, create it via the cloud formation. And on the other hand, if you put in your seed phrase, into the cloud formation, um, this would be saved in the cloud formation, which adds security, um, a little bit of security risk. So we said, no, you need to set, put in or create that yourself. Um, it's described in the guide. It's not, not a big step, but you need to create the seed phrase yourself within, the, within your uh, parameter store. And then if you do that, that's all set up and there. Um, if you don't want to use the cloud formation, um, there's a question, how do you get to this um, code? Because that's, zip. <laughs> that's what where this Lambda function is running on. And this is basically coming from our repository. And there is one important, important part, and that's why this is, this is red, <laughs> because here you need to be careful. Um, could either if you want to run that and you don't want to run the cloud formation, but you want to be on the safe side, which I really recommend, um, as you say, okay, you set it up yourself, you know exactly what's happening there, you don't trust any cloud formation from us or anything, and you are able to read the code, then go to the official, our GitHub repository, um, check the code, check out the code, build the code yourself, and make it separate out of it. The whole stuff is in there. You can preview the code. Um, and build it, compile it, and then upload it to the Lambda function. Best case, you do that yourself with your own code um, or with your own um, from your own environment. Um, if you don't want that, but you and you trust us with a zip, um, you can take the, the pre-compiled zip from the official release. We always add pre-compiled um, zip from the current state of this release into the release notes, um, into the release of the um, world now. Maxi version 2 has this released. You can take that and upload that. Or if you use the template um, in the, within the template, um, the zip is already integrated. What's really important is that you don't upload any other code in here. Because if anybody else is giving you, for whatever reason, a uh, zip and says, look, I have a good, a great update for you. It's an improved world maxi or anything. And you upload that. Always keep in mind that this code has access to your seed phrase. Um, because as soon as you upload code in here, it's in this environment and it's access to your seed phrase. So an attacker can give you a wrong code. And if you upload the code into your AWS account, your seed phrase is visible and they can do whatever they want with your account. And this could would take, in theory, one or two transactions and your whole account is gone. Um, so keep that in mind, only upload code either that you compiled yourself or from the official GitHub. We, as the developers of Vodmaxi, will never send anyone directly. No, this is a fixed version. No, here is an alpha version, an update or anything. If we do an alpha version, if we do beta testing, it's always via an official pre-release on the re repository, and there you have the stuff. Never trust anyone who's writes you and says, I have an improved version, upload this zip. 
don't. If you if you have them, report them to us, and we will make sure that the community knows that those are scammers because they are most likely scammers. Don't do that. Um, so that out of the way, that's basically, in my opinion, the two main attractors or the two main things that you should keep in mind regarding security. You have your seed phrase in the AWS account, so secure that, and code has access to the seed phrase, so be careful what code you upload. That's one last thing that I want to mention, because till now, this is just running in AWS. Um, it has the logs in AWS, but you don't use, you see what it's doing on your dead address if you look at it, but there is no notification of sorts for that. So we added Telegram, um, where you, it's also described in the guide how you can create your own Telegram bot um, with the token and you put the Telegram token into your parameters and then your um, version of, of Old Maxi is able to send messages to your Telegram. Um, so you get a Telegram notification or a Telegram message whenever something happens. And there are two channels or two, two parts. One is the notification channel, which gives you a message on every execution. And the other one, so you get a fifth, every 15 minutes, you get a notification. Um, I have that, I have two different channels um, for that. And um, for this um, 15 minute kind of um, watchdog, um, it's muted. So whenever I want to look into it and see, is it still running? I can look into that and see, ah, yeah, the last execution is 10 minutes um, old. Um, everything is good. Um, so it is this muted, but it's good for checking if it, everything's running, if everything's green. And the other um, channel is for every action that is taking. So you get a notification if the world, uh, if Maxi did something. Either if there was an error and you need to do something, if the, if you should um, check what's happening, um, then you get a notification that there was an error, or if it increased exposure, if it reduced exposure, or if it reinvested um, money, then you get a notification, something happened, and you see what it's doing. So you always know what's happening, what's up. I would highly recommend that you activate Telegram, um, the notifications, and at least have the notifications up, because um, if there's an error, you want to know about that. Otherwise, there might be an error and you don't see it. Even if there's an error in your setup, if your parameters are wrong, or if there's a problem with the, with the vault that it can't access it, it's not your vault because your seed phrase is wrong or anything, you get a notification here that there is some problem and you need to check your parameters. Um, so always do that um, so you know what's happening and don't, and don't fly blind, basically. So that's it. Um, I hope this was helpful. If yes, leave a, leave a like. If not, uh, leave a comment. And with that, see you in the next video.